Hi guys, Jeremy with Four Sons Off-Road. So uh, today we got a cool little truck to feature for you. We don't get too many of these in. This is a 2002 Mazda Bongo. And this is uh, the SK82L model. So it's four wheel drive with a gas engine. Um, the really cool thing with these is they're definitely not a uh, standard mini truck as it were, but they're definitely still tiny compared to North American standards. Uh, but this truck actually has a 800 and, uh, I believe 850 kilogram capacity in the box. Three passenger seating uh, in the cab. And of course is four wheel drive. High low range transmission. It's got a five speed manual in this model. We've done uh, quite a few little touches to this for the customer. We did custom order this uh, right from the get go for the customer specifically. And uh, he's uh, requested all of the modifications. So we've uh, put a set of uh, new Goodyear uh, Ultra Grip Winter tires on this truck all around, studded. We've also done a full spray and box liner, as well as uh, spray the headache rack and the uh, tie down hooks on the outside there. On the back end, if we go come around, that is a custom custom built uh, rear bumper with a two inch receiver hitch there. That uh, doesn't interfere with the uh, you know license plate mounting and spare tire and stuff like that for the customer so we can still daily drive it. Now the truck is running. Obviously they're nice and quiet. This is a four cylinder engine in this uh, in this unit. These are similar. We've done the uh, Toyota Town Ace trucks before. Similar truck to the uh, Town Ace. Same, same classification of uh, vehicle anyways. Little differences uh, here and there of course. But uh, really nice interior. Little bigger cabs of course than your standard mini trucks. Real uh, seats. Now this little thing here is the center console. Flips up for a third passenger seat with a seat belt in the middle there which is nice. Uh, access to your motor is just underneath the uh, passenger seat as well so similar to the standard little mini trucks uh, you can you got the little latches in here flip the latches and your seat flips up get access to the motor I'll show you that. Yeah, so there we go passenger seat flips right up there access to the motor right underneath. Again, that is a little four cylinder fuel injected gas motor in here. These make about 80 horsepower, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. So again, they're not uh, power monsters by any sense, but uh, a lot peppier and a lot more grunt than the uh, little K-Class mini trucks for sure. So if we pop over to the driver's side here, uh, as you can see, kind of standard cab over configuration. So if we hop inside, so yeah, this is a uh, truck only has 21,500 kilometers on there and that is a six digit odometer in case anyone's wondering. Standard gauges. Five speed transmission with a high low range sub transmission. Now the, the way that this uh, system works when you initially engage, so you do have to be stopped initially to engage the four wheel drive on this system. So with the Let's just shut her down and restart it here. I'll show you why I did that. So basically, when you initially want to go into four-wheel drive, you have to be stopped and clutched. You engage the four-wheel drive, and what that'll do is you'll see the four-wheel drive engagement come on top and RFW lock. Now the RFW lock, basically what that is, is it keeps the front axle. If you remember on some of the older Suzuki's, they had an axle lock. Basically that keeps the front axle uh, engaged so that now when the vehicle is running, we've basically got shift on the fly. You notice the RFW lock stays engaged when we shift between two and four wheel drive. Now you can pretty much just shift it on the fly. Uh, that'll stay engaged until you physically shut the vehicle off uh, and then it goes back to just standard two wheel drive mode with the front disengaged. One other thing we did on this little truck, we installed a little stereo system, just to AM, FM, Bluetooth, which is uh, Nice, so we've got a working radio in there. Standard uh, heater uh, in these trucks, and the heater works great. It's freezing cold. Again, we're minus 20 degrees Celsius today, and uh, this truck's going to be nice and warm, just like your regular North American vehicle will. Lots of storage, little uh, cubbies. Big, uh, actually a big storage underneath here for uh, clipboard or laptop or whatever you want to throw in there. Of course, glove box. Here's our this little center console here with uh, cup holders and 
Again, that just flips up. So a lot, a lot more room, of course, in these trucks than the standard little K-class mini trucks as well. But uh, they're uh, they're still not huge. Not a huge truck. So I mean, unfortunately, if you're really tall, pretty much any Japanese vehicle is still going to be pretty small for you. This unit does have an airbag in it as well for the driver's side. Nothing on the passenger side there. But uh, anyway. We're going to take this truck for a little bit of a highway cruise, actually. Nice drive down the highway, because, of course, it's a highway-capable vehicle, and we'll see how she does. But, uh, yeah, nice unit. Now, of course, one thing I did forget to mention, uh, these are still a standard drop-side truck, so you have your latches on the side, the latches on the back, uh, and even though this is an 8-foot box on this truck, you still have the full drop-side panels, which is really nice. There you go, 850 kg capacity. That's a heavy duty little, uh, heavy duty little truck. But uh, yeah, let's go for a good, uh, good cruise down the highway. All right, so we're just gonna head out here. Just leaving town, we'll head out on the highway and see how she does. But I mean, this definitely is a truck you could use as a, as a daily driver for, for short commutes. I mean, it's still, again, it's only 80 horsepower. It's not gonna be a truck you're gonna wanna take down the highway for hours and hours every day, but so yeah, I've got her up just over a hundred kilometers an hour here, just cruising down the highway. Um, you know, definitely a little bit of wind noise for sure, compared to like a you know your modern North American vehicle, I guess. But uh, solid down the road, steering nice. I'm not pushing it hard at all. You know, holding the hundred, there you go, 105. Probably not a lot of passing power left. You know, at this speed, it, definitely not. But Again, something that I, you can cruise all day like this. It doesn't feel like we're stressing anything out at all. We've got a little bit of a river hill coming up here. We'll see how she does climbing the hill. All right, so yeah, just coming up to a, a bit of a river hill here. Good size hill coming up. It's uh, enough that most most uh, regular vehicles when we're driving here will drop a gear if you're trying to maintain your speed, you know, up the other side. So. Just leave her in uh, fifth gear here for now and see what uh, see what she wants to do. But uh, driving impression so far, not too bad. This thing, I, I know how they justify the 850 kilogram payload because this thing rides like a truck. Like it's it's solid. <laughs> you feel you feel the bumps for sure. Uh, like it's it's a stiff ride. So I can see loading down, it would handle it quite well. Yeah, let's uh, see how she does up this little hill here. So she's coming in about 105. Well, not too bad for 80 horsepower. We're losing a little bit of speed down to about just over 90 there to be the worst of it down to 95 so yeah just left her in gear crawled up not too bad I would think that would be pretty good obviously you could drop a gear if you really needed to but pretty good it's just on a little kind of a back secondary road here now just like every uh, other Japanese vehicle that we've driven this is kind of uh, I would say where they do their best uh, down around, I don't know if you can see that, and see here, oh, doing 70, 70, 80 kilometers an hour, this is where they really feel comfortable, like they, you can, they're quiet, they're, uh, you can definitely tell the engine's not trying hard at all in top gear, and uh, like you feel like you could drive this way for hours, like no problem, so. I mean, that's, I'm assuming just how their roads are over there. If you don't, you know, don't have a lot of fast roads, you don't need to design all your vehicles to do, you know, fast speeds. So, yeah. We're going to take this on a little bit of a, well, it is off-road. A little bit of a plowed off-road uh, uh, dirt road through the field. We'll see how it does just with some basic off-road stuff up ahead here as well. All right, well, we've got a ton of snow here, so let's... Uh, try out the uh, four-wheel drive and see how it uh, how it works out got a bunch of snow last night and it's been really windy so we've got some pretty good drifts here I think too Let's see 
how she does here. So I do have it just in high range, uh, four wheel drive already. Yeah, we've got some actually really good drifts we're gonna bust through here. Actually rides pretty good, like the stiff suspension. I mean, it's bumpy, but it's not bottoming out or anywhere close to it. Over these bumps, so not too bad if you wanted to use this as a farm vehicle, that's for sure. And again, next to silent when you're driving around at speeds like this. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, a little bit of spinning, but we'll go back and you can see how drifts here. Okay, not too bad. Yeah, so what do you guys think? You want one for the road or for the farm? Let us know. Like this video, leave us a comment. Make sure you check out our website, foursonsoffroad.com. And uh, don't forget to subscribe as we've got lots more mini truck videos on this channel.